Hi folks, Ken Rust here with Louisiana Pond Management. We are a professional lake and pond management company and we wanted to talk to you today about what's going on in City Park Lake in Baton Rouge. There's been a lot of speculation, there's been a lot of frustration, there's been a lot of news articles, there's been a lot of news video that have come out, There's and there's a lot of emotion behind what's going on in City Park Lake. And I just wanted to explain several things and several aspects of what is actually going on in this lake. One thing, people say, oh, it's covered in algae or it's covered in sludge. Well, it's not really algae in most cases. It's aquatic plants, vascular aquatic plants. And we're gonna go over what those are specifically and why they're working together to overtake this lake in such a, such a dramatic fashion. So when you look out across this lake, Everyone thinks that we have algae as the major part of the problem. Algae is a very general term. There's single cell algae, there's filamentous algae, there's lots of different kinds in each of those categories. But the problem out here originally was not algae. When you look at it from the bridge, or you look at it when you're walking around the lake, you might think, hey, it's algae. That's the only thing I'm familiar with in a pond. There's lots of different types of vegetation in here. And they're working in, 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 in concert to make this compound problem that has gotten it into this condition. So just dragging up, dragging up some of this vegetation, we're gonna bring this onto the boat and look at it. This very, very tiny material here, that's called water meal. It's just about the size of cornmeal and it is, each one of those is a single plant. Very, very difficult to get rid of. Is it a native plant to Louisiana? Yes. Another one we have here, just slightly bigger, is duckweed. Duckweed was one of the primary issues out here that you saw in large patches. Now duckweed is a very very small plant and it has just a couple of little root hairs that grow off the bottom of that three leaves there. Normally in a clean pond or a lake that doesn't have anything to interfere with it this material would get blown over right to the edge of the pond or lake and just make a little ring around the pond. But because we have all of this material growing up from the floor of the pond or the lake out here, it's growing all the way from the, the floor of this lake all the way to the top and it tops out and it makes structure and that holds this water meal in place and it holds this duckweed in place. There's also another plant called azola, very similar, a little bit larger, about as big as the end of your finger. And it also would go over to the edge except for the fact that we have this other material growing up from the bottom making a structure across the surface of the lake that holds it in place and makes it a whole nother unsightly experience. This is coontail. Is this a native plant? Yes, it's a native plant. Is azolla a native plant? Is duckweed a native plant? Yes, these are all native plants to Louisiana. And so this is coontail. This is, growing, this is a vascular plant. It has roots, it has leaves, it has stems. It is growing all the way from the bottom of this lake to the surface and it grows in mass. This is a large percentage of what is on the bottom of the lake. Here is a piece of alligator weed. It's just getting started. Now alligator weed is something that, we'll show you some, there's another, there's another piece of alligator weed growing up right there. And the, uh, the thing about alligator weed, it, it's a vascular plant. It kind of kind of floats along the surface, but when it has this much structure out here, it can seed in right on the top of this raft made up of coontail and southern naiad that's growing out here in the lake. So when it can do that, then it can make its own raft out here where normally you would only see this as a rim around the lake. Now it has free range to grow over the surface of the whole lake. Lakes go through a natural process where they try to fill in over time. And this is one of the methods that they do it. They have a lot of aquatic vegetation. They grow, they create rafts and then that catches more and more material, it dies, makes more compost out in a pond or lake, and then it begins to it begins to get overwhelmed and it starts to fill in and turn back into land. And that is certainly, you know, in between, it's just an unusable piece of water that um, is unsightly and it's not what you want uh, in place for your real estate values, it's not in what you want in place for your community, it's not how we want to represent Baton Rouge. This is filamentous algae and this is a small component of what's out here on the lake, maybe about 10% only of, of what's out here in the lake. It's filamentous because it makes a filament. So it's just a category of algae. It's a plant, but at the same time, it's not a vascular plant with stems and roots um, and, and leaves. It's, it's just got one type of cell. So we pulled our boat out of this lake 
look what we have here. Duckweed and water meal. It's all stuck to the side of the boat. Plus there may be other seeds stuck to the boat. That's one of the reasons that you always want to be careful to clean your boat before you exit or after you exit a lake before you go to the next lake or pond because you can infect somebody else's pond or lake with this. So you can see back behind me on this particular end of City Park Lake, you can see there's a reddish brown color out there sprinkled in with all of the green color. That's a very small floating plant called azola or water fern. It produces spores to reproduce, multiplies very fast. It's not really out competing the duckweed or the water meal that's covering the surface, but it's just another species that's out here on the lake. Also, there's a big raft of plants out there. That's not alligator weed. That's water primrose. Very similar growth habitat to alligator weed. It makes a floating stem, runs out, it has a nice pretty yellow flower on it, but it has been able to grow on top of this vegetation, the water meal, the duckweed, and the azola out there and make this large floating raft out there on top of this end of the lake. So water primrose, out here in the background, alligator weed. We have some torpedo grass up here in the front here. And of course, everybody's familiar, familiar with the, the elephant ears that grow around the lake. But the problem with the elephant ears is they hold trash when it blows off of the road and then no one ever picks it up. No one wants to access that area, whether it's a landscape or whether it's a direct park employee, whether it's a concerned citizen, no one wants to reach down into, into uh, elephant ears and retrieve that trash. So this, this vegetation along the edge here is also problematic. Okay, so we're on the other side of a bridge connecting City Park Lake to University Lake that is uh, connected to Stanford Avenue over here. This is water hyacinth here. Big shiny leaves, has some bulbs on there that help it float. It connects, it reproduces by seed, by fragment, and it reproduces very fast makes really large rafts. You've probably seen this. It makes a large, complex purple flower. It's very pretty, but this is truly an invasive and an exotic plant. It does not belong in South Louisiana. It's clogged waterways all over the Southern United States in years past before it's been brought under general control. This is water lettuce here. That's another invasive, exotic plant. It does not belong in South Louisiana and it makes rafts. It's not as hard to control as water hyacinth, but on the other side of the lake over here, they're letting it grow uncontrolled. And that's gonna be a problem that's going to eventually need to be addressed. 